Hello, math learners. Brace yourselves as we discuss today's lesson. Are you ready? Let's start! Now that you can already determine whether the collection is well-defined or not, let us now proceed to different types of sets, universal set and subsets. Consider the sets U, A, B, and C. Set U has elements Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Set A has elements Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Set B has elements Tuesday and Saturday. And set C has no elements. In the given sets, Set U is considered a universal set. A universal set is a set of all sets or subsets. It is the set containing all elements of which all other sets are subsets. Sets A and B are subsets of set U because each element of set A and set B is an element of set U or all elements of A and B can be found in set U. Set B is called a proper subset of set A because set A has elements that are not in set B. While set C is a null set, it is a set with no elements or an empty set. An empty set or a null set is always a subset of any set. Now let's discuss more about universal set. What is a universal set? It is a set of all sets or subsets. It is usually denoted by capital letter U. For example, set K has elements 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, while set L has elements 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. If we are going to write all the elements in the universal set, set U is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are all elements found in set K and in set L. Now, what is a subset? If all elements of set A are also elements of set B, then A is a subset of B. Take note, subsets can be found in the universal set. Now, let's proceed to the methods of writing sets. There are two ways to write sets. First one is using the roster method or the listing method. Well, the second method is the set builder notation or the rule method. What is a roster method? Roster method is when the elements of the set are listed and enclosed in braces. For example, set P is a set of integers between 1 and 5. If we are going to write this given set using roster method, it would look like this. P, which is the name of the set, is equal to open brace to comma 3, comma, 4, close brace. Another example. Set Q is a set of positive even integers less than 10. So that would be Q is equal to open brace 2, comma, 4, comma, 6, comma, 8, close brace. Another example, set R is a set of vowel letters. We know that the vowel letters are A, E, I, O, and U. So if we are going to rewrite this set into roster method, it would look like this. R is equal to open brace A, E, I, O, U, close brace. Now, let's talk about set builder notation. When we say set builder notation, the rules of membership are indicated. 
and we use these symbols, which is read as set of all x such that x is a or on. Examples P is a set of all x such that x is an integer between 1 and 5. Another example, set Q. Set Q is a set of all x such that x is a vowel letter. Let's have another example. Write each set in set builder notation. Number 1. Set F has elements guitar, violin, and harp. We know that these elements are examples of string instrument. So when we are going to write this set into set builder notation, it would look like this. Set F is a set of all X such that X is a string instrument. Last example. Set A has elements red, yellow, and blue. We all know that these colors are primary colors. So if we are going to rewrite this set using the set builder notation, set A will become a set of all X such that X is a primary color. Now, let's talk about cardinality of a set. The cardinality of a set is the number of elements of the given set. Consider the following examples. We have set L. Set L has elements A, K, S, F, and G. If we are going to count the number of elements that belong to set L, it is equal to 5. So that means the cardinality of set L is 5. Next set is set M. As you can see, there are no elements of set M. So that means the cardinality of set M is 0. The last example is set N. As you can see, there are two elements of set N, D and Y. So that means the cardinality of set N is 2. Take note. The symbol for cardinality is N, open parenthesis, A, close parenthesis, where A is the name of the set. More examples. Set O is a set of letters of the English alphabet. We all know that there are 26 letters of the English alphabet. So that means the cardinality of set O is 26. Set P is a set of vowel letters of the English alphabet. There are 5 vowel letters, so the cardinality of set P is 5. Set R is a set of colors of the rainbow. There are 7 colors of the rainbow, so the cardinality of set R is 7. Set G has elements 2, 5, 8, and 7. There are 4 elements, so the cardinality of set G is 4. Next is set A. It has elements 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. Or these are the odd numbers. So the cardinality of set A is infinite. We cannot count all the odd numbers. There are two kinds of sets according to its cardinality. We have the finite set and the infinite set. A set is finite if all the elements of the set can be listed down or countable. While a set is infinite if all the elements of the set cannot be listed down or not countable. For example, the set of regions in the Philippines. This set is considered as finite set because we can count all the regions in the Philippines. The set of counting numbers. This set is considered as infinite set because we cannot count all the counting numbers. We cannot also list all the counting numbers. More examples. Set G has elements 2, 3, 4, and 5. As you can see, we can count all the elements of set G. 
and that is 4. So that means set G is finite. Next is set M. Set M is a set of students in SACS. We can count all the students enrolled in SACS. So that means set M is also finite. Set A has elements 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. Because of the three dots, this means set A is infinite. Always remember, the only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics.